Six men have now entered a simulated space capsule where they're starting an 18-month-long experiment that imitates a space flight to Mars and back. The experiment, which is taking place in a warehouse in Moscow, will test whether humans can cope with the phobia they'd experience during a real mission. Cameras will constantly monitor the men from Russia, China, Italy and France as they perform routine maintenance and scientific experiments. Well, joining me now to explain the science behind it is our correspondent, Paul Rinken, and to explain just how the astronauts will cope with the isolation and claustrophobia is psychologist Dr Jane McCartney. Well, thank you both for being here. Paul, if I come to you very, very quickly, um, they can't obviously imitate weight they're testing in technical terms. Well, they're going to try and imitate the tasks that astronauts will face and also the kind of isolation, confinement that they'll face on a long-duration space. To Mars, about 18 months it, it would take to go from Earth and back again, a round trip. So they really want to see how they cope with some of those pressures. But obviously they can't imitate everything, as you say. Um, what they're going to try and look at is the psychology of how the astronauts perform under pressure and in the long confinement, the isolation. The people have uh, said before that there, there are three, about three stages to how astronauts perform in space. And by, by about three months, they're not functioning as, as well as they could be. All right, well, let's get the psychologists in, in, into that. I mean, clearly there are going to be physical challenges, but the main challenge, I guess, is this question of psychology. Well, what is this three-month uh, thing that Paul was talking about? Well, any space mission, you know, the psychological welfare of the astronauts is critical mm -hmm. to any success of any space mission. So this is obviously, you know, what, what is under, underpinning this whole experiment, to find out exactly what's going to go on, what's going to go on when they're in their small little capsule together and they're going to find out exactly how they're going to react with each other, the group dynamics of who's in charge, who doesn't want to be in charge, who kind of, you know, plays what role well, it's presumably who's in charge is, is is you know there'll be a captain of the mission won't there well yes there should be and this person should be taking the ultimate responsibility but you know you can't have six levels of in chargeness and it's going to be people finding out their place in the group you know who's the organizer who's the comedian who's the you know the go-getter and you know when people are led their particular roles they don't always kind of you know want that particular role I'd rather be the you know the one the lazy one if you like today but Paul how how much do we know about what's actually inside this capsule? I mean, do we know about the kind of sleeping birds? Um, I mean, you know, I hate to say it, uh, but, but, you know, the lavatories and so on. I mean, do we, how much do we know? Well, we know quite a bit. We've got plans from the Russian Space Agency and the European Space Agency. It's about uh, 550 cubic metres in total, but so that's so what's split. That? What's that? What's that? Uh, it's about a tenth of the uh, size of an Olympic swimming pool, about that. Um, and it's split between... Area, there's one bit that actually simulates the surface of Mars. So they, were at, they actually, at one stage, once they get to Mars after a few months, they have to don spacesuits, get in their uh, capsule and, and simulate a landing. Um, and they land on Mars and it's actually a room filled with rocks and sand and they have to perform right. as if they're carrying out real tasks. Uh, Jane, how important will it be for these men to be able to get some time on their own? I mean, I don't, it's obviously going to be very cramped. Absolutely. It's crucial I mean, saying this is all part of the I'm in a spaceship or you know simulated spaceship with six other people and being able to get that place on your own is going to be absolutely absolutely essential because you know you need a place where you can reflect that you're not having to talk to other people about anything whatever it is whether it's about the actual mission whether it's about personal stuff it's very very important and I know that has been factored in I believe into the actual whole I mean, mission. I, I suppose I mean it's like people living together um, you might get an argument over you know how you squeeze the toothpaste to you. Absolutely. <laughs> but the, the difference here is, you know, if you're living in a flat and it all gets too much, you can walk out of the door and go for a walk around the block. These uh, chaps aren't going to be able to do that, or theoretically aren't going to be able to do that, because it's a simulated, in brackets, false mission. You know, they, they, their welfare is ultimately what's, what's responsible. And if they bang on the door and say, let me out, they're probably going to have to let them. There have been all these, the Apollo missions to the moon. So, I mean, some of this homework has already been done, hasn't it? That's absolutely right. Uh, the Mir space station that the Russians had, uh, there was one crew that stayed on there for, for, for about 438 days, so about as long as this. And so they know a lot about the psychology of astronauts and how they perform. I mean, obviously, with things like weightlessness, which we mentioned before, that has real effects on people's sleep. Uh, you lose bone mass, uh, muscle mass, and so on, and they can't simulate those things here. And that will obviously have an impact on how people perform on, on a real mission things they know and things they can't do with this actual experiment. Uh, Jane, fairly briefly, I mean, the fact that they know that 
they can get out if things get really bad. I mean, you've got to factor that into the psychology, isn't yeah. it? Because it, it obviously, once, they're, once they've taken off on their way to it's Mars, there is no, no turning back. Uh, it, and it's interesting. And in, in many ways, that might be the thing that keeps them going. Because actually, if I really need to, I, ca I can go if I really, really want to. But I, maybe I don't need to because I have that. So actually, being thousands of miles away in space, you know, is going to it's be going slightly to be very, different. Very different. Yes. But they have to be seen to be, you know, because things will come up during this experiment that they maybe All haven't right. considered. Say, McCartney, Paul Rinkin, thank you both very much. Thank you. Well, if you have views on this or any of the